Today's Old Testament lesson beckons me outdoors, inviting me to step into flowing rivers. Naaman the Syrian asks, are not Abana and Farfar the rivers of Damascus better than all the waters of Israel? And just like that, I'm gone. Imagining those rivers and recalling all the other rivers that I have ever seen. Abana and Farfar, now called the Bar Barada and El Lawaj, rush down out of the mountains southwest of D Damascus, splitting into countless fingers as they flow in and under and around the city, filling springs and fountains in nearly every home along the way, finally dissipating into the desert below the city. The Jordan River. Born in the north, fed by the Hasbani, Benais, and the Dan Rivers, and the Ion Stream, flow through the swampy and diminished Hula Lake, then into the cool, clear waters of the Sea of Galilee, with its endless supply of religious pilgrims, then down through the Jordan Valley, slaking the thirst of everyone and everything along the way, washing away the sins of the faithful, finally taking its rest in the Dead Sea, 400 meters below sea level. Imagining these biblical rivers sends my mind rushing along the banks of the countless other rivers I know. The frying pan, flowing through the deep, dark waters of the Rudai Reservoir, tumbling cold and beautifully down the mountain through the village of Basalt into the Roaring Fork, which in turn flows circuitously down valley into the Colorado River, picking up the waters of dozens of streams and creeks along the way and bearing in its course fly fishers, of every sort. The Eleven Points River flowing south for 138 miles through Missouri and northern Arkansas, picking up the flow of Greer Spring Branch, meandering through some of the most remote parts of the Mark Twain National Wilderness, populated by otter, eagle, and trout, and occasionally aging clergy in rented <laughs> canoes. The Big Hole River gathering place of 2,800 square miles of watershed in southwest Montana. Begins in Skinner Lake, flows northwest past magnificent groves of huge trees, ranches, parks, and small towns, past eagle, bear, and elk, carrying along its course raft after raft of hopeful anglers. The spring-fed north and south Llano, flowing through the arid lands of west Texas, merging near Junction, creating the Llano proper, flowing northeast through the Edwards Plateau, the Llano Uplift, and past Enchanted Rock, finally joining the Colorado and LBJ Lake, then Marble Falls, and Travis, Austin, Ladybird, meandering through Catherine Roberts' backyard all the way to the Gulf of Mexico. The Guadalupe, running from Kerr, running from Kerr County, carrying fly fishers and sunburned, half-dressed, half-drunk revelers and countless abandoned styrofoam coolers <laughs> making their way to the San Antonio Bay. Perhaps by now, you too have let your mind wander. Wander out of an old church in downtown Austin and off to the, your favorite moving waters in your own life. You tilt your head and you can feel the gentle tumble through rocky crevasse, the smell of verdant, moist air all around you, hear the never-ending song of bird and frog and cicada. And then, then perhaps, you understand a little bit more about Naaman the Syrian. Perhaps then you can understand why Naaman might have been reluctant to wash in the foreign waters of Israel, preferring instead the waters with which he was familiar. Perhaps you can understand why his imagination might have taken him home to the waters of the Abana, where he might have bathed and played and fished as a child, away from the complex vagaries of adult life before the weight of responsibility and power clamped down on his shoulders, before the isolation and shame of leprosy plagued his life. But instead, here he stands, on the banks of the shallow, silty Jordan River, being asked by a strange prophet to simply take a dip. Perhaps you can understand all the steps along the way that made him who he was, that made him strong and powerful, all compromises that were required in that journey. 
you can understand how over time his power and influence grew and how no matter how pure and idealistic his motives might have been in the water in Abana so long ago, he has been molded and changed by the power and influence that he has been given. Perhaps he has been powerful for so long that he began to think of the trappings of his power, the soldiers under his command, his access to the king, the weapons of war, and even the horse upon which he sat as extensions of himself. Perhaps you can imagine that sense of invincibility that it might have engendered. If we can imagine that, then it's also not too hard to imagine the incredulity he must have felt when he heard those dreaded words, you have leprosy. Strong and powerful though he was, he knew where this was headed. A long, slow season of sickness and pain, separation and isolation, and eventually an end to all the things to which he had become entitled. Perhaps you can imagine this blow to his pride and the fear of what the future holds. Perhaps you can imagine how hard it was for him to accept the help of others, to make himself vulnerable enough to follow simple, modest instructions. And now imagine, if you will, him being cajoled by his subordinates, finally deciding to lay aside his pride and step into the Jordan River. After stepping down from the horse, laying down weapons, removing leather and fabric, and he stepped naked, vulnerable, and exposed into the flowing stream. Imagine the initial chill as he plunged awkwardly under the first time, then the second, then the third, coming up for large gasps of air, each time feeling the weight of power and responsibility washing off of his back and shoulders. Then the fourth and the fifth and the sixth time, feeling the water burn and tear at the open wounds on his skin. And then finally the seventh time, miraculously, feeling cool water on new, healthy flesh. Imagine Naaman stepping out of the water, healed and whole. Imagine how light he must have felt. Imagine his reluctance that he must have felt to put back on all the defensive layers after being made whole by the love of God. And just as our, my imagination ran away at the beginning of the sermon to moving waters in our own lives, I want to ask you to let your imagination run once more to the places in your own life that look a little bit like Naaman's? Where are the places in your own life that need to be washed by the cool, healing flow of the living waters of God's grace? Where in your life is begging you to come down from your lofty, defensive perch, asking you simply to take a dip? Where are the innate layers of defense? What built-in prejudice and blindness keeps you from accepting healing counsel from unexpected sources? What are the things in your life that make it risky to shed the layers of defense and release the familiar weight of your preferred weapons in order to plunge deeply into the waters of God's love? What things do you allow to keep you isolated and alone instead of allowing the kindness of other people and the healing power of God's love to wash over those tender and broken parts of you? What power, what fear, what secret, what prejudice block you from experiencing the grace and healing of God's love in your life and the grace of true community? I invite you into one more flight of fancy. Imagine yourself now, once again, stepping into the waters of baptism, your own baptism. Perhaps you were so young you can't recall it at all. Perhaps you remember only smells and the color of the day and the warmth of your mother's body sitting next to you in the pew. Perhaps it was more recent, surrounded by loving community. Or perhaps it's an invitation you have yet to accept. Imagine the simple invitation to step into the water. Go for a dip. 
Allow the water to surround you, to cool you, to soothe you, to heal you. Allow the river of baptism to carry you along into loving community, into the word of God, swirling around the altar, feeding you with God's body and blood. Allow the waters of baptism then to take you on back out of here like the rivers of, the rivers of Damascus into the myriad fingers of the world that also need to step into the healing power of God's grace. And finally, imagine all those rivers leading you, leading each of us into the never-ending love of God. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.